All right, the first project that you've been given in class is to create a dance with your robot. So a dance is simply a motion that is set to music, and it's usually a repetitive motion. So we're going to start very basic, and then we're going to build our way up to some more complicated motions. First thing we want to focus on are these motor blocks. So to create movement, we're going to be using our motors that are connected to our robot. And once your robot is connected via Bluetooth, you should see which motors you have available. So I have C, D, and E motors available. C and D are my wheel motors, which we'll eventually use to move my robot. And the E motor is for the arm that goes up and down. So I'm going to start off by focusing on the E motor. And I'm going to, because I want to move that motor, the first setting on here is to choose which motor you want to control. So I'm going to be choosing letter E for my arm motor. And then I'm going to just close it by clicking anywhere else. The second setting is the rotation direction. So it can go either you know, one way up or down. Those are the two options. Then you have a numerical setting here and then the all important what is it going to do is it going to rotate uh, for one rotation or is it going to rotate one degree or is it going to rotate for one second alright so next thing you want to consider is which of those three options do I want to use in this scenario so if I leave it to rotations and leave the number to one it's going to try to rotate the arm all the way around 360 degrees. So it will get to this point and it will no longer be able to rotate anymore. So it cannot go all the way around through the body and then back around. So this is not going to work. I'm just going to go ahead and run it. So it was not able to do that. That's the gears grinding there. So it's not physically possible to do one complete rotation. I could leave this setting here and reduce the number, but what is lower than one? You can't use zero, that would be nothing. So you have to use a fraction, so a decimal point. So if I wanted to do half of a, a rotation, I would do 0.5. If I run that, that's still too far. So it hits the top there and then it can no longer travel. So if you know anything about circles, you know that half of a rotation is 180 degrees. So this cannot travel 180 degrees. If it did, it would be facing, you know, from front, it would move to the back. It can't physically do that. So let's try something smaller than that. Let's do 0.25. All right, so that's a decent rotation. And yes, it did hit itself in the head, but it stopped right there. So I could leave it at 0.25, which if you think about it, since this is a circle, like the gear is itself a circle. So one full rotation of the gear would be, you know, 360 degrees back to the, the original position. A 90 degree rotation would be straight up like that. So 0.25 rotations is actually 90 degrees. It's 360 degrees divided by 4 is 90 degrees. So it's doing a 90 degree rotation if I do 0.25. So let's go ahead and try that again. There you go. So there's another way I could do the same thing. So Rotation is similar to degrees. One rotation is 360 degrees. So if I wanted to do one complete rotation, I would do 360 degrees, which we've already talked about. We cannot do that. We, can, we can't do 180 degrees either, but we do know that we can do 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and put 90 degrees in. And we, will, we should get the same result. Same thing. 
So 0.25 rotations is the same thing as 90 degrees. The other option we can use is seconds. So seconds is a duration of time, so it's going to travel until that time runs out. So if I were to use seconds, I would have to use probably a fraction of a second. If I did one second, let's see what happens if I hit play. Yeah, one second is too long. So it is simply going to turn the motor on for however long you set it here. So let's try something smaller than one. So let's do point um, two five. Let's do a quarter of a second. All right, so that I could do is point two five seconds. So those are the three different options you have here and kind of the way that you can use them in this uh, project. So um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and start, try to do our first dance motion. In class, this is sort of our first project was to get the arm to go up and down repetitively. So since we know how far we can travel with our arm, I'm going to go ahead and set, set this to Let's just use seconds, and I'll go ahead and grab another block because I want it to go up, and then I want it to go down. Set it to the same motor, and this time I want to go in the opposite direction. I want to make sure that I have the same settings in here, 0.25, and just to keep it consistent, I'll do seconds. So now I should be able to go up and then back down. Alright, so now I'm going to repeat that motion. So I'm going to use a control block to do that. So there's a few uh, control blocks that we'll use in here, but the repeat block is probably the most important. Because you're going to be repeating motions to music. That's what dancing is. So if I wanted to repeat that 10 times, I would set this to 10. I'm going to do it just four times just to see what this looks like. All right, so there you go. There's a motion. So one of the things that's a requirement in this project is for your arms to move along with your physical robot. So by combining your arm movements and your robot movements, you're going to create a dance routine. So now we've figured this out. What I want to add to this is a completely separate string of code that's going to be, you know, wherever I want it to be, but I'm going to put it over to the left. So I need another event that starts when I press the play button. So now I can have two different things going on when I click the start button. Now the important thing to do is to not have the same motors controlled in different strings of code because they're both going to start at the same time. If one string says to move the motor up and the other string says to move the motor down, then they are competing and that's not going to work out. So the, the, usually the way that you use this is you'll designate one string to one set of motors and then the other stream to another set of motors. So since we already have this string going with our arm, let's go ahead and start one for the movement so now we're getting into the pink blocks. So movement means you're going to control multiple motors at the same time. And you want to coordinate their movement. So one could be moving one direction and the other could be moving the opposite direction. So these blocks are necessary if you want to control both wheels at the same time. So to move forward, you need these pink blocks. So we're going to start by just moving forward simply so this block here, the first pink block, is what you're going to mostly, you could use your whole dance routine could use just this pink block. Because in the first option you have direction arrows. So you have the option to go forward, backward, left, and right with this one block. So when my program starts, I have this set to move forward for 10 centimeters. 
Centimeters is not a measurement that we use commonly in the United States. So you could change that to inches, but in this scenario, we don't know, like your motors don't know how long to turn on to move an inch or a centimeter. So neither one of those really um, is very useful in this project. So then the other three are similar to what we just talked about in uh, the arm movements. So you have your rotation, degrees, and seconds. So whenever we're talking about dance moves, you're usually set in a specific amount of time. So you want to do something for, let's say, like four beats or uh, you know, two measures if you know music, or four measures, or whatever. So you're doing something for a length of time. So rotations doesn't really matter. Neither does degrees. You, you want to have a motion last for a certain amount of time. So we're going to focus on seconds. And 10 seconds is a very long time to move forward. That would be kind of a boring dance move. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how long should my movements be? So in order to do that, we're going to do, we're going to just take a break from coding and just focus on a couple of resources for your music. So you should have picked out a song already. I have chosen, I like to move it to be my song for this project. And so I'm going to play this for just a few seconds. connected to my speaker here. Any moment, should start playing. Alexa, play I Like to Move It. I like to move it by Will I am from Spotify. Alright, here we go. So this song has a specific beat to it, and every song does. So some are faster than others, some are slower than others. So to find out how fast the song is, we're going to use an online resource called a metronome. <clears throat> so a metronome just lays down the tempo. So this is beats expressed in beats per minute. So if you compare the, the ticking sound of the metronome with the music, you'll notice it's slower. It's just not quite fast enough. So you could use this little slider and kind of guess, increase it until it gets close. So that's pretty close, actually. But a more accurate way of getting a, an estimate of what the beats per minute is would be to use something that's called a tap tempo. So if you just search online for a metronome, this is the first result that came up. And this has the option to tap in a tempo. So I'm just going to start tapping to the beat of the music. So that's pretty close. It's getting off a little bit, so maybe it's like 125. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's pretty close. Most dance music is going to be in the 120 to 130 range. So if it's a fast song, you're looking at about 120 beats per minute to a little bit more than that. If it's a slower song, it could be in the 80s or 90s. So just depending on what style of song you have, your first goal is to figure out how many beats per minute are in the song. I'm not sure how to stop this, so I'm just going to close it. All right, the next step is figuring out how many seconds per beat. So if you want to time 
just notice in our programming we have the option <clears throat> of seconds. So we want to know how many seconds to move if I want my movement to last one beat of the music. So here's a little formula to figure that out. First thing we want to figure out is the seconds, or first thing we want to figure out is the, the beats per minute, which is what I just discovered was 125. So I'm going to just plug that number in here. So again, you use the online resources that you have to figure out the beats per minute. It's going to be different for every song. Mine just happens to be 125. The next thing I'm going to do is divide that number by 60 because there's 60 seconds in a minute to figure out how many beats per second. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So 60 seconds in a minute, we figured out how many beats are in a minute. We wanted to see how many beats are in a second. So let me use my online resources here again, calculator. So I want to divide uh, 125 divided by 60. And I'm going to write down that number, 2.08. I could do 2.083 if I wanted to be a little bit more accurate. So that's in my little notes app here. So I have 2.083. And then my ultimate goal is to figure out how many seconds per beat. So, so if it, I'm going to divide this number Actually, you're going to divide 1, which would be my second, by how many beats in that second. So I want to do divide 1 divided by 2.083. So let me go back to my 1 divided by 2.083. So 0.48 beats. I don't know, 0.48 seconds per beat. So a beat lasts in this song 0.48 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in so I remember that number. 0.48. So let's do this. And just to test out our theory here, let's go ahead and set our arm movements to 0.48 seconds and see how that looks. So right now it's at 0.25 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect this for now. So 0.48 seconds. That decimal point is very important because if you run this for 48 seconds, that's a very long time. So 0.48 seconds. It's going to go up and down. And let's just do this to repeat 10 times just so we have plenty of time for this to play. To play the music. Run my code. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because again this I'll just pause the music. So this is expected. So I have this set to move for a specific amount of time and that's not limiting the, how far it goes. So it's just set to go on at a certain speed for 0.48 seconds. So the one way that I could limit the amount of travel is to tell this motor to slow down. So let me get my guy back up here. Sorry, I left you in the dark for a second. So what was happening is it's going it's trying to move too far in 0.48 seconds. So a way that I could solve that is to slow the motion down so 0.48 seconds doesn't travel so far. So we're going to talk about how to set the speed. So here is a specific block to set the speed for one motor. So since I'm working with mo one motor, I'm going to go ahead and put that it can go inside the repeat or outside at this point. I want to keep my dance move inside the repeat, so each time it's just going to reset the speed to a certain number, even though it's going to be the same every time. 
So let's try this and see how fast that is. This is at 75%. So that's traveling too far still. And if you notice, it's kind of hard to see because of the lighting in here, but there's a little bit of space developing in between the gears. So if that happens to yours, you simply just need to squeeze these back together. That's what happens when it tries to move too far. So now that connection is really nice and tight. So I need to decrease the speed. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start slow and if I can speed it speed it up I will so I'm going to start with let's try 40 percent see what that does so that's about as far you know as fast as I can travel if I wanted this to be you know set to the music and to move up for 0.48 seconds and then move back down for 0.48 for seconds so let's go ahead and play this with the music and see how it looks. Pretty good. So it may not be like exactly the same tempo. If I play this for a minute, it might get off a little bit. But what I'm asking for you to do is take some effort to time your movements to the music. So if it's a fast song, it should look fast. If it's a slow song, your movements will be slower. So, so I expect that you take some effort to try to time your motions with the music. So I'm showing you a very specific way to do that with that formula that I showed you in my, my notepad here. So if you need to rewind to try that with your own song, you can do that. So I figured out how many seconds are in a beat, and it's gonna be most likely a fraction of a second. So now I know my formula that gets me pretty close to right on the beat. So I'm pretty happy with that. So if I wanted to, to have a continuous motion, for 0.48 seconds, I had to reduce my speed to 40%. So now we've gotten the arm movement down. Let's move to actually moving our robot. So where, where we were at here is trying to figure out how many seconds to move. So if I wanted to move forward for two beats, that would be 0.96 seconds. Let's say I want to move forward for two beats, and then I move backward for two beats. So I'm doing the math here and adding two beats together, which gives me 0.96 seconds. So there's a little bit of math involved in this. So, and not every movement is, if you watch any dances, some movements last longer than others. So, but I want them to mathematically equal uh, some a number that makes sense to my song. So I'm going to move forward for two beats. So let's go ahead and I'm going to disconnect my arm motions just for now so we can focus on just moving. And hopefully I won't cause any damage on my desk here. So let's go ahead and play this. Nothing happened. That is expected. So right now I've said move forward, but I haven't said which motors are supposed to do the moving. So these are, this is a very specific block, and you'll notice on the blue blocks we had to set the motors, but this block doesn't have that option. There's a specific block out here that sets your movement motors. So it's towards the bottom of that pink set of blocks. So you want to find this specific block here. It says set movement motors to, then you can choose a set of motors. It should be C and D because that's what we, how we built our robots, but you could choose any set of motors. So once that is set, then your motions will make sense. So now it knows how to move forward. It will rotate motors C and D. So let's go ahead and now let's play that. All right, so I'm running out of space 
Let me move some stuff on my desk here. That should give me a little bit more room. And let me start back a little bit more. It's about as far as I can go. So that last two beats. So I'm going to go ahead and now duplicate this, dragging another block in, same block, but I'm going to change the direction and move reverse. I'm going to set it to the same duration of time. So I'm just inventing my own choreography as we go. I want it to move forward for two beats, move backwards for two beats, a very simple motion. So let's go ahead and play that now. All right, so now we have some stuff going on. We get, we're moving forward, we're moving back. We can add in our arm motions here. Let's say we want to do this. Since this, we're moving up and down. So while this is going up and down, which would take 0.96 seconds combined it's going to move forward so as it moves forward it's going to move up and then down then as it moves backward it's going to move the arms gonna move up and then down so mathematically these things should line up together so let's go ahead and let's just do this twice so the first time up and down is going to be for the forward motion the second time up and down is going to be for the moving backwards motion. Let's go ahead and play that. That works. All right, so let's say I wanted to repeat that. Um, say four times. So I need a repeat block in order to make that happen. That's in your control blocks. So this pink set motor, motor uh, movement motors should only need to be used one time in your code. Once those uh, motors are set, you don't need to move that. You don't need to use that um, block anymore. So I wanted to do this four times which means I would need to do this set of instructions for eight times because there's this only does half of it. It runs this code to move forward, then it runs this code to move backward. So now I could do this four times in a row. Let's go ahead and start the music up so we can see how this times up with our music. There we go. So that is a dance move. That is a combination of moving my robot and my arms together and it's a simple up down motion your arms can't do much more than just move up or move down but there are surprisingly a lot of things you can do with just that simple motion and then of course you have the option to move forward backward and then rotate left or right so let's go ahead and add our second motion here so um, yeah let's do I want to inch forward just a little bit, maybe just do some four really short move forward motions. So I'm going to do, this is kind of just a little transition here. Again, I'm not a choreographer, but you know, I do pretty well for my robot, I guess. So I want to do just four short move forwards, just really quick. So um, that is just to get my robot more into the center here. So I think it's going to end about right here, hopefully not falling off of the desk. And then I'm going to move forward. So I'm going to go to my movement blocks again, move forward. 
let's say I want to move really quickly but I want to kind of just instead of just moving for you know one beat let's divide one beat into four sections so if I wanted to move forward for 0.12 seconds and do that four times that's going to be the equivalent of one beat so let's just see how that's gonna look and if you get distracted by some of your code um, just separate it from your play button so I know I know this already works and it's set to my other dance stuff so I'm going to just pull it off to the side I'm gonna do that the same thing with this code here so I could focus on just this one dance move here so I'm just gonna press the play button and see what happens so nothing happened so sometimes when you set the settings really low it doesn't know how to do that so this, these aren't like really high-tech you know expensive motors so once you get down into the really small fractions whether it be your speed or this is you know moving forward oh this is centimeters ha huh. let's try that again I'm reminding myself of my own stuff so here we have move forward instead of 0.212 centimeters which is a very small movement we're doing 0.12 seconds so let's see if that changes anything so that was pretty fast that's just one beat so let's try to do that for uh, let's do it eight times see where that gets us I'm just trying to move forward a little bit so it might be better to move a full beat or let's do a half a beat so that would be 2.24 and let's do it four times so this is just kind of trial and error figuring out it, it didn't look very good oh. here's that decimal point is really important like I said so here we go, let's try that again. There we go. So that gets me to where I want to be on my desk, kind of. So now I'm going to do something different. And let's do something that's rotating back and forth a very simple motion so let's go ahead and change these to left and let's go ahead and do one that goes to the right and again we're going to use uh, let's just do them one beat each so point four eight point for eight make sure you set this to seconds and then I want to repeat this so let's do peat block put that in there and let's set it to left right left right let's do it four times All right, so I've got this going on. So if if I want to now do something different with my arms, I'm going to need to figure out at what point in my dance do I want my arms to move again. So if I don't want them to move during this point, I've added some time here. So this block is 4 times 0.24 seconds. 
So that starts to get a little bit, you know, might need your calculator for that. So let's go back to my calculator. Four, or no, let's do this. Four times 0.24 equals, no, 0.96. minimize that so we can see our robot again so 0.96 seconds so I need to if I don't want to do anything with my arms right here but then I want to continue doing something later on I'm going to need to use what's called a weight block so I've finished a motion and then I want after that I want to wait 0.96 seconds that allows this to happen then after that, I want to coordinate something that uh, moves with my going to the left and going to the right. So I have four movements. Let's try to do like a halfway up and then a halfway up again. Let's see what that would look like. I'm going to disconnect this so I just focus on my arms and let's disconnect this and let's just see what we can do with our arms here so again I'm going back to this the motor blocks the simple blue ones control one motor at a time so I want to make sure it's set to E and let's say I want to move um, and this time I'm going to set it to degrees because I know I have 90 degrees to work with Actually, no, I have to time this. So let's do seconds. And let's figure out how far. Uh, the first ones we set to the speed to 40. And it will stay set at that speed as long as I, I don't change anything. So let's say I wanted to move quickly, but for um, not very long. So let's do another set motion speed. Let's double that. So let's go 80. So the other one was 40. This is going to be faster. And let's do for 0.1 second. Now let's do 0.2 seconds. And then, so if this is 0.2 seconds and a beat lasts 0.48 seconds, I can have a weight block in here. That says wait the rest of that beat. So that would be 0.28 seconds. All right, got that. So I want to do that twice. Let's see if we can do that physically, if that can work. I'm going to include this speed block in this movement. and let's just do that twice so up twice really short movements point for point two seconds and then wait so that's our up movement this has to be set to E so that works so there's a little pause in between the two movements. So don't forget that this weight block can be used to make your motions different. Even though I'm simply moving up, I'm moving halfway and then the rest of the way. So it's like a, a different type of movement. So if I wanted to do this, all of this again, but go down, so let's duplicate this. So that's a right click, duplicate. I got a copy of it. Put that down here. So this is my other stuff. Let me zoom out so I have more room here. So this is my original thing. I don't want to lose that. I'm just moving it off to the side for now. And so I want to go up twice and then down twice. Oh, that's up. Let me stop that real quick. OK, 
Okay, I forgot to change the direction. So this one should be set to the opposite direction. So I can go down. Okay, now we'll, we'll run it, see what it looks like. There we go. I'll play it again so you can see it. So each of these represents one of these. So it goes up while it's turning left, and it goes down while it's turning right. And I repeated this four times. So it's left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So I need this to happen four times as well. So this is going up. I mean, this is turning left, and then this is turning right. So I need this, all of this to repeat four times. So I'm going to nest a repeat. So this might look a little complicated, but all I'm doing is repeating something that's already repetitive. So I need to repeat all of this. So I'm going to add this block here. And we're going to repeat this four times so that I'm matching these instructions over here. The This one, this this repeat is what we're looking at here. So let me go ahead and move this up here. So this, this is the motion I'm trying to match. So it's supposed to turn left, right. And while I'm turning left, my arm's going up. While I'm turning right, my arm's going down. And this is set to 4, and this is set to 4. So hopefully this math is all working out here this might not work out. So it's going up. Let's just play it and see what happens. Okay, so what I have is each of these is uh, 0.48 seconds. So this is 0.2 seconds plus 0.28. That's 0.48 seconds. And then I did that twice. So that's 0.96 seconds. So going up lasts 0.96 seconds. So if I want to match that while I'm turning left. I need to increase this to 0.96. And then I can re increase the other one. So now it's going to turn farther because it's turning for a longer amount of time. But now it's matching my arm motions. So let's go ahead and play this. OK, so that's a little bit hard to see on my camera. Let me go ahead and put it a little bit farther forward. There you go. So let's put those two together. So I'm going to start with my original. Whoops. Get that back real quick. Here was the original beginning of my dance routine. There's the last part. Same thing over here. This was the beginning. There's a second half. So I need to make sure I'm starting in the right spot so I don't run off my desk. And let's go ahead and press play and see what happens. Alright, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to hold the camera in an area that you can see it better. And then hopefully you can see this. 
And I'm going to play the music just for an example here. So you can see so far what I have in my music. All right, so the project that you've been assigned is to continue coding. So the only bad thing to do is just sit there and not do anything. So your dance moves can be whatever you want them to be. Um, I would encourage you to not just do random stuff. So be a little bit planned in what you're doing. Be strategic. Think about what your motions you want to have, have happen and try to coordinate your robot movements with your arm movements. So again, if you're using your space correctly, you should have two separate um, threads of code. I would advise you to use your pink blocks for your robot movements, you know, forward, backwards, rotate left and right and then your blue blocks for the arm movements which is the up and down movements and yeah just be creative the re requirement for this is that it is uh, you have 10 unique dance moves so in my code right now I have um, if, if you count this little short you know move forward I have three different dance moves I have the one that's moving forward and back with my arms going up and down I have this little section here where I move, uh, you know, really short distances, repeated four times. My arms are waiting during that period of time, and then I have turning left while my arms go up, turning right while my arms go down, and so far that's three unique dance moves. So for this, I would I would have to make seven more dance moves. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions or any difficulty um, with your projects.